The North Shore Drive along Lake Superior is one of the most beautiful drives in all the United States. I would even rank it as a top five drive, maybe top three. There's so many beautiful things to see along this drive. Waterfalls, lighthouses, uh, interesting little harbors. Just an amazing place to come and visit. Today we're going to try to visit as many waterfalls along the North Shore Drive as possible. And we are starting out with probably the granddaddy of them all, Gooseberry Falls. Now Gooseberry Falls is not to be confused with Gooseberry Pie. Went into the gift store here and there is no Gooseberry Pie. That's a shame because gooseberry pie is very scrumptious. But I think after seeing gooseberry falls, you will agree that the waterfalls are equally as scrumptious. Come to a divide here, upper falls to left, middle and lower to the right. We can still get to the upper from down here. There's some stairs down here, so there is no real right or wrong path here. You can hit them all because the trails loop around. I'm taking the stairs here, but if stairs are an issue or a problem, there is a looping trail that goes around. You can see somebody's walking up it right there. Beautiful fall colors here and the second week in October. It is totally beautiful here. We're going to start out with the middle falls of Gooseberry Falls. I keep going back and forth as to which is the best. I think the middle falls is the best when I'm here. And then when I get to the upper falls, I think the upper falls is the best. And uh, you'll have to come here and decide for yourself which is the best waterfall around here and what's the best view. The Middle Falls has several options. Right off to a pathway, there's this area here, which I really like a lot. You'll notice from here, you can see the bridge going across with the North Shore Drive. So what's amazing here is we walk up just a little bit more and it will disappear. See, you come in here close and you can't even see the North Shore Drive anymore, the bridge. Look at how beautiful this is. It's been raining a lot lately, so these waterfalls are really pouring. I mean, they look nice in a normal year here in the fall, but there's a lot of extra water flowing down here right now. We will now head down towards the lower falls, although we'll stop for a little view from that rock outcropping. One of the things nice about Gooseberry Falls is that everything is marked really well. There's no real confusion as to where you're going. Some of the state parks can be very confusing here in Minnesota as to where the trails are leading. Here's the view from lower down. As you can see, the bridge is right above there. I don't prefer this view because I like to avoid bridges and other man-made objects in my waterfall images. At least most of the time. Sometimes you can't and you just have to uh, embrace it. This is the view from down here. Let's head down to see the lower falls. Now I've been here a number of times and I'm not sure if this is the lower falls or there's another waterfall on that side is the lower falls. I've yet to figure that out. For all the 
good labeling of things that I just got done bragging about. This is the one thing I'm not sure if this is just a little pour off area, although it looks like a waterfall. But the other area on the other side also looks like a waterfall. I don't know. Maybe they have twin lower falls. That could be. If you happen to know, please say so in the comments below because I would like to know for sure which one is the lower falls and which one isn't. We'll see the other one here in a second. And here we come to our Thomas Kincaid Bridge. Offers nice views of the waterfalls from here. So incredibly beautiful, especially with the fall colors. Alright, here we are. This is the other waterfall I mentioned that is in contention for lore. Falls. See a little bit of that other one right over there. They're both beautiful and they're both worth taking photos of. As to which is the lower, maybe you can help me just to decide. So we're going to continue on the trail here and Let's get going. And there is the upper falls. Really beautiful. Incredibly beautiful. The upper falls has just a little bit more of a surprise and we'll check that out in just a minute. Look at all the pour off here and the way it drops down. This is so beautiful. Maybe because I'm able to get in so close to it like this, one of the reasons I like it. But I just also like it because of all the shapes. You can get close to the edge here. Not too close. Try to stay on this side of the edge. You've got a wide angle lens. You can aim down. You can get this. Oh, so incredibly beautiful. This is it for Gooseberry Falls. Stay tuned and we will get to the next waterfall. It will be a surprise for you. Beaver River Falls is in Beaver Bay. And where I just showed you is where I parked. You're right along the North Shore Drive. The bridge. Because the bridge, I think, just gives a really great overview. You can really see the fall colors. As you can see there. Look at this incredible view from up here. You can also hike down in there. It's not too bad of a little hike. A couple spots, a little bit of a scramble, not too bad. So that's another option and the parking area for it is just right over there. So you can park there and follow the trails. But for a really quick waterfall, if you're pressed for time, you can't beat this area here. You can shoot wide, you can shoot tight, and I'm going to do a combination of both. This is just one of my favorites. I mean, I love Gooseberry Falls. Uh, it's got a lot to offer in the name. You can't, can't beat the name. 
but as far as the ones that we're seeing going up and down this is this could be my second or third favorite area that i enjoy stopping partly because it's just it's just so convenient Tedaguchi State Park is our next destination here. There's quite a few waterfalls here, four or five of them. We won't hit them all. This one's going to take a little bit of hiking, although from the parking spot, uh, there's the water comes down. This is the Baptism River, it's called, and the water's got lots of little cascades and cool things. You can photograph. After we get underneath the bridge, before we get on the actual hiking trail, I'm gonna come up here, much like in Beaver Bay, and photograph from the bridge. If you don't have time to hike, then I would suggest stopping and just coming up here to the bridge and photographing this and looking at this from up here on top. Time to get hiking. Two step falls is 0.9 miles. High falls is 1.4. For two step falls, you can definitely photograph it here. I just did. But there's a dim trail off to this side that leads closer to the side of the waterfall. See how awesome this looks from up here? Just walking a little closer up. A lot of people just stop right where you get down at and that's all as far as they go. But I like the view from here. You see a little bit of the stairways coming down. The trail does loop through around the baptism river here and you'll see people coming down there from that side of the trail once in a while well that was 200 stairs to two falls two step falls so from here we have 0.5 miles to to high falls which is where we're going next we'll be there lickety split I can really hear High Falls now. You have two options here. You can go higher to High Falls, kind of look down on it at that point. Or we can go down lower below High Falls and look up to High Falls. And that's what I'm going to do to start with. And here is High Falls. I counted 85 steps, not 83 steps. But who's to quiver over a step or two? Or quibble, not quiver. Quiver is where you put your, your arrows if you're using a bow. We will be able to see the top of High Falls here in just a second. Looks pretty neat. This is the view. Waterfalls we can find next. 
Cross River Falls this is another fun, really quick and easy waterfall to get to, which is great if you're running short on time like I am. They actually have a little parking area just on the south side of the bridge with a rest area, which is really convenient. Of course, you have to deal with the traffic going by. It's a little noisy, and that's an understatement. But look at the view that you get from right here. Now you can walk around on the other side and you can get around and you get views lower down, which looks really nice. But I just really like this view right here. This is right along the North Shore Drive. So let me take a few photos and since I'm running short on time, we will get on our way. We are at the Temperance River State Park. This is just a little taste of what we're gonna see. I'm photographing this from the bridge. And further up inland, there's a waterfall called Hidden Falls, which is hidden from us. We're gonna go check that out. And then we'll come back here and we'll follow this drainage on the other side of the river, or the other side of the bridge, and it's a really cool area over there. So Temperance River State Park has two main areas to photograph from, I believe. And we will hit them both. I like the way it's pouring out down there with all the fall colors. It looks beautiful. And I've set up my camera and tripod already here on the edge. There's Hidden Falls, way back in there. It is pretty hidden, I would say. I don't recall it being this hidden. Maybe because I love the chasm area on the uh, superior side of the bridge that uh, I totally had forgotten just how hidden Hidden Falls is. Well, before we ventured over to the other side of the bridge, and I'll show you that, I decided to better check out the, the river here, the bridge, the view from the, the view of the river from the bridge. English is my first language, believe it or not. So this gives you some nice views. You don't actually see the waterfalls, some cascades and some dropping down. But it is really cool. Extremely cool. And on the other side of the bridge, you can get some shots just as the hidden waterfall begins its descent. Right in there. And some very nice views. Well, let's continue on. I'm going to go down this side this time. The road does loop there, so we'll come out on this side and get you to the spot that I really have enjoyed and photographed several times as the water pours out into Lake Superior. At Temperance River State Park, we are now on the east side of the North Shore Drive Road. And we are heading down the pathway to a really cool area. The water just does so many cool and amazing things as it's on its way to pour into Lake Superior. First, let's see the water. As it comes down, there's North Shore Drive bridge up there. You can see a hidden cascade in the background. This little area is about hiding all the waterfalls. Seems like, except for this one right here we have before us. It looks so amazing. And then 
there's where the water pours in to Lake Superior, where the river and Lake Superior meet. And we have some fall colors. See there's a little observation deck over there if we wanted to walk over there and see it from there. This is the end of Temperance River State Park. We are going to head up further north. We have more waterfalls to find and explore and photograph and video further up north. So let's get going. Just about six miles past Temperance River State Park, you will come to the Onion River. This is a fun little area, real easy to get to. There's a parking spot here for the Ray Berglund, I think Berglund, uh, Wayside Park. So you can park there, you can just walk over here. We are right next to the North Shore Drive, as with many of these. There's no huge rushing waterfall right here, but these cascades that are coming down here, all these little cascades coming down, just make for such a pleasant scene. It's so beautiful right here. So whether you uh, like onions or don't like onions, I would suggest stopping at the Onion River and spending a little time with it. Who knows, if you didn't like onions before, you might decide to start putting onions on your cheeseburgers after this. Cascade River State Park has Cascade Falls. It's on your way to Grand Marie. See it's a little ways down, I'm not sure how many miles, but it's before you get there. And while it's not right on North Shore Drive, which you can hear is right behind me, it's just a short little walk to get there. So that's what we're gonna do. The suggestion that I'd read was to cross the river and go to it on this side and then come back the other side. It looks like the trail is like a loop, like a loop trail. There'll be a bridge it looks like going across the river. So I'm gonna take their suggestion and do that. This is very beautiful here, even though it's no, there are not any waterfalls here, the cascades here make this a very pretty view. This has not been a very long of a walk. It took me maybe three minutes. Look at that. We come to the bridge. It crosses over the Cascade River. In front of the map, Falls should be behind us. I'm not sure if, it's, if there's a section called the Cascade. This could be them. I'll have to do some more research. And I don't know how great the Cascade waterfall actually looks, but this area right here just totally captivates me. I'm going to spend a lot of time photographing this section. I love how it pours off into a pool pours off into another pool. That is so awesome. So I will have to see if the Cascade Falls is better than that area or not. Here's looking down. Cascade Falls is supposed to be down probably right around the corner where it disappears. Cascade River Falls, or Cascade Falls on the Cascade River. I'm not sure where it was. I sure saw tons of falling water. Somewhere in here was 
is the Cascade Waterfall. This has been really fun on this section. I really like this area, even though I don't know which one it was. It's very beautiful. But it's time to get on to our next waterfall. Just when all hope was lost on finding the Cascade Falls on the Cascade River, I believe we found it. Look at that, and that's probably the biggest drop I've seen, so I will declare this the Cascade Falls. Just south of Grand Maurice is Fall River. You don't find this listed in a lot of the guides, but I really like this one. It's small, it's not too big. Like many of them, it's right off the North Shore Drive, as you can hear. We've got this bottom pour off section here, and I will move around. And you see this section right here. You can see how it kind of drains off into a culvert because it flows right underneath the North Shore Drive. Look at how nice this is. Nice little view back inside there. Got some fall color. This is Fall River. I don't know if these waterfalls or cascades right here have any name, but it's just south of Grand Marie. You will see the sign for Fall River as you cross, it o cross over it. Be sure to stop. As we move closer to the Canadian border in Grand Portage State Park with High Falls, we come to Judge C.R. Magny State Park, home of Devil's Kettle Trail and the Devil's Kettle Waterfall, along with a couple other ones. The Devil's Kettle Waterfall is notorious for its notoriety is for the fact that it splits there and one part of it just like disappears. And for years and years and years and years, they had no idea where it disappeared to. Finally, they've traced it down to where it does somehow come back and meet up with the river. Although I don't think they know where yet, they just know that somehow it gets there. Here we're at the bridge, crossing the Brule River, on the way to the Devil's Kettle Waterfall. The water movement is so incredibly cool, I like that. It's cascading down and look off in the distance, that's the North Shore Drive. I'm gonna stop and take a photo of this. I really like the lines in this. And if you look on the other side of this bridge, some very nice fall colors going there. I've yet to get to the Devil's Pedal waterfall. I haven't been there before. But if you're short on time, I would just drive in and even just this, to me, would be worthwhile. Look at that floor off right below there. A nice wide angle in. You could get that in. That bridge area was really awesome. Uh, I could have spent easily an hour or two just right there. There's just so much going on there. This is the trail now we have to take, heading to the Devil's Kettle. What's interesting is I'm a little bit hungry right now, but I'm not sure I should eat anything that the Devil's cooking in the Devil's Kettle. I don't know how well that would go down. So I guess I will just chew on some beef jerky and leave it at that for now. And here we come to the turn 
I don't see a sign, but there's nowhere else to go. Somebody's written 192 steps to the bottom. And there's more stairs. We see the sign here for Devil's Kettle Falls, 700 feet that way, We're almost there. Down below here is Upper Falls. And let's go check that out. This is Upper Falls. This is where we just walked down. I'm not sure how many steps, not too bad. Upper Falls is below Devil's Kettle. Not sure how it got the name Upper Falls. Maybe there's a lower falls I didn't see down there. This is definitely worth walking down to and seeing. There it is, although we only see part of it. Trees are in the way. I've looked obviously online and seen photos of this where you can see both sections there. We only see the one on the left. So there must be another way to get all of it in the frame. This is gonna wrap it up for the waterfalls here, the devil. Devil's Petal Waterfall and Upper Falls here in Judge C.R. Magni State Park. Okay, on to Grand Portage State Park. Welcome to Grand Portage State Park. We are almost to the Canadian border. I think we're only like a half mile away. This state park borders along with Canada. In fact, they share the one river, the Pigeon River, cuts between the, this park and the park that's in Canada. I think it's Pigeon River or something like that in Canada. This is called High Falls that we're going to. And it's higher than the other High Falls that we'd seen earlier. This is supposed to be the real High Falls. Although some discount it because it borders along with Canada. So they say oh, it's got a shared border so it's not officially the highest waterfall in Minnesota. I think that's a little too nitpicky. We are racing the sunset. It is going to be very close. Fortunately, it's just a short walk. Should be there almost any moment. I think I can hear it. been raining so the flow on it should be really stupendous. I cannot wait to see it. As it gets later and the trees get taller, it's getting a little darker in here, I can hear the waterfalls. The trail splits off two different parts or this boardwalk that we're on now. I'm taking the one that goes the highest and we'll see where that leads first. And there it is! Two parts of it are flowing. From photos I've seen, there's another pour out that occurs over on that side, probably in the springtime. Look at how awesome this is! So the other boardwalk maybe leads over there to that observation deck. If we have time, we'll go check it out. If not, we got to the High Falls. The true highest falls in Minnesota. I don't care if we share it with Canada or not.
So if what's true, then right over there is Canada. Oh man, look at that. It's just right there. I could fly a paper airplane over there. And I could have it land on Canada and say, hey, neighbor. Well, it's time for some photos before it gets any darker. It is getting very dark and this video may start looking really bad. But I wanted to show you this other side where the boardwalk goes. And this is a really nice spot too. I think I'll take a few photos here. I walked up to the end of the boardwalk here. And that means it's also the end of this video. Definitely hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed visiting all these waterfalls and and just getting a chance to check out some new ones. Please be sure to come back and subscribe and share and comment and like. Thank you very much. Come back for more.